G'day folks, well just when I thought I couldn't get enough computer stuff like laptops and things and quad Xeon servers and desktops and more laptops and things, well my local barbershop man dropped by with something that he said he was going to drop off for a while. I initially thought when he said it was his kid's old computer that it was like maybe a 486 or a 586 or something. Um, this is a lot older than I thought, and he actually kept the original boxes. That's not an old IBM compatible. <laughs> That's an original Amstrad. Like, everything's in there, apart from... I don't think there's a mouse. I don't think they even had mice, mices, mouses. But everything else is there. Like, the system unit, no monitor. Um and keyboard so that's really neat <laughs> I mean originally I just said take the hard drive out and destroy it all but I thought nah I might as well pick it up in case it's a 486 or something that's becoming collectible well I was kind of wise to do that because it'd be a shame to throw that on the bonfire that's essentially where it was going to go is this going to get hurled straight on the bonfire and burnt up but no it's it's safe now it can go with my, it can sit alongside my PPC 640 when I set up the living room properly with my collection. And it does have the hard disk. He didn't remove the hard drive, he just said to destroy anything or delete anything that's not, um, or anything that's personal, that sort of stuff. I mean, I'm not going to go through it. It's, even though it's really old information, I'm just going to um, probably either wipe it or at least just go through the Windows personal files directory and just delete everything. And, uh, yeah, he also gave me this thing, which is a tiny little solid-state amplifier. It's a little single-channel stereo amplifier. Really, really neat stuff. Like, this guy was into, um, audio-visual for years. The barbershop always had old TVs and radios and stuff in it. Just, you can buy it cheap as a second-hand item. So he always had TVs and stuff around, and I actually gave him the, uh, little cathode ray tube that I put in the kiln and melted flat. He's got that mounted on the wall with a lot of other odd things, odd computer bits and pieces and things. Um, yeah, so big thanks to him for that sort of thing. It's, I had no idea. He was in a real hurry. I didn't even get much of a chance to talk to him. He had, I think it was fresh pizzas in the car. He had to get home and I didn't realise it was Amstrad until we got it into the carport. It's like, holy crap, this is actually an original thing, so... Yeah. <laughs> Let's uh, clear the table and plug it in. Let's see what happens. Okay, well this computer doesn't appear to have a keyboard plug of any kind on it. Looking at the back of it, there's just the regular serial ports and things, but I don't know what's going on there. I'm thinking maybe there's also another plug for a um, monitor-mouse combo or a mouse-keyboard-monitor combo and because I didn't get it I probably can't do anything with it which is a shame it does appear to have a sound card on it which is on the expansion slot there but there's no actual keyboard plug which is a bit of a shame I'll have to look that one up either way I'll power it up and just see what happens but I don't think I'll be able to actually operate there's nowhere to plug a keyboard into it hmm Okay, let's see if this does anything at all. <laughs> Power switch. Woohoo, 640k plus 348 extended. Keyboard error. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I need my keyboard plug. Damn you. It's not going to go any further because of that. I'll open it up and have a look anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I think tomorrow I'll go and see my friend and see if he still has the monitor or anything else for it because it looks like maybe this plugs into some other part of the system and then out. Yeah, so select like to switch for XT or AT format. Hmm. It's really neat, but unfortunately I can't plug it in anywhere. 
which is a shame because this thing wants to work. You idiot. You should have remembered back to your childhood and realised there was something down there. Thanks, brain. <laughs> I completely forgot that the um, keyboard plugs and things are underneath it. <laughs> yeah, the foot standoffs are high enough that you have the cords coming out under the front of the chassis. Well, you learn something new again once in your life, well, it's for the second time in your lifetime. Assuming the shed doesn't get blown away with this bloody wind. <laughs> weather's, weather's gone crazy and I've gone crazy. Yes, that's where you plug in mousy and keyboardy. Oh well, that's nice to know. We're still going to open it up now that we've gone this far. Oh, look at that. That takes me back. <laughs> Even just the smell of it. It's just amazing. Old computer smell. Amstrad PLC 1991 Yamaha YM3812 audio processor. Nice big through hole I see. <laughs> Citizen 5 volt 420 milliamp drive U1DA 38A. It's the same Citizen that produces uh, precision watches and other stuff. Some RAM modules in there. Very small, of course. They're probably only like four, four or eight k each. Um, I've probably got some better ones to upgrade that. To, as a matter of fact, I don't know if I want to, but yeah. So 3316 mic DC tanks. Hmm. Hard drive looks like an early, maybe an early uh, Seagate or something. Notice there's no. Um, ATX power connector on it though. It's connected through the IDE but it must be powered through IDE or whatever it is. Yeah, it's an early, early IDE. I don't know how to get it out though. I've had a look at it. I can't just slide it out with that. It's all one in one. I've got to strip the whole thing down to get the hard drive out. But I think it's probably best left undis undisturbed. I don't know, I'll have another look at it. If I can get the hard drive out easily enough, I'll show you, but otherwise, no. As for the board, well, I'll take this card out and have a look at that too. Okay, well, there was only one way I was going to get into the heart of it. There's actually not too many screws. There's like four screws holding this whole assembly in, and it all comes out as one. So that's not a bad thing. Good old sound card. It actually has very early SMD technology on it. Like 90... 91 and probably a little bit earlier. I like the fix on the uh, VGA port, little diodes going straight to the ground. That's a nice little fix. Battery's not leaking, thank God. That was my main concern when I got it. A lot of these old PCs die because the uh, batteries leak, the nickel cadmium ones do. So if anyone knows a good replacement for these 3.6 volt 50 milliamp hour batteries, let me know. I know you can get three volt and button cells, but I don't think they work the same. Something on the board though. Um, could be capacitor juice, but I hope not. <laughs> There's a power supply there, but yeah. There's a power connector for the main board. Only literally, there's three neg three negative wires, two purple and um, a um, yellow, which is probably 12 volt. Most of this thing's 5 volt. Nice big Rubicon capacitors. That one's bulging ever so slightly, but it's still happy. It's still good. No obvious CPU apart from that one. It's not. There's no Intel CPU or AMD CPU. It's this thing here, 50 megahertz. It's a Chips F82C452. And the extra code underneath it's TC6049AF. It's made in Japan. So it's kind of interesting. I'm guessing these are your CMOS check sums, odd and even. But yeah. That's not a regular floppy connector. That's, that's an IDE style connector, but that's not. That's completely different. Yeah, that's amazing. 
I haven't had one of these in a long time. I never paid this much attention to them either. Four screws. Let's get this hard drive out and find out what it is. Oh, look, you know, I see it on the underside there. Seagate. It's an old uh, stepping motor driven one. You can see the stepping motor housing in there. That's, uh, that's old. That's maybe 20 megabytes at the most. My, my money's on 20 to 40 megabytes. Oh, look at that. It's an old Seagate, all right. It's actually the power is supplied through that little connector there. It's an auxiliary power connector. You don't use the normal um, four-pin Molex like you do on a regular main board. It uses this one, and that's what these big DC grain silos are for, powering the hard drive. That's an ad additional option. And as you can see, 40 megabytes. Massive. Yeah, I haven't seen one of these in a long time. ST351AX. Very nice. Do not low level format. Wow. <laughs> That's nice. Very nice. They don't build them like this anymore. Lots of surface, very early surface mount technology. Big components. I'm not going to take the board off it, but you can, as you can see there, there's a couple of modifications. Look like diodes going across that capacitor. Or no, not to the capacitor, but they're coming back. There's a whole string of components just soldered together in there. <laughs> things were rough back then. Mind you, things are probably pretty rough these days. Everything's so small you just don't notice it. Whereas these, back in the day, all you see is components going here, there and everywhere. I'm sure if I pulled the board out, you'd see all sorts of stuff like these little patch wires carefully attached to those ICs all the way across to here through a resistor to that capacitor. And there. Little patch-ups, little, little modif after modifications without actually modifying the printing of the board. Because it's a lot cheaper to do that than it is to rework the tooling or the, um, the screens and things used for printing the board. Like, that's big bucks. So you might as well just sort of patch it up a little bit and yeah, that's very, very common in the electronics industry. That's one thing I noticed, especially the old VCRs and things. You'd always see wires and components. On the underside of the board, there'd be loads of little components just bridged over pins as a fix, just for that model revision. And then they change it the next model. They might, even a few models along, they might revise the PCB screening and everything and get rid of all that. They'd have the components on the board. But yeah, it's, it's very common, surprisingly common. But this thing, yeah, that's antique. It's going back in there, and now that I know where to stuff the mouse plug and the or keyboard plug, we can power it up again. All right, let's see if I plugged everything back in properly. <laughs> it's always fun when you take something apart and it sort of works or doesn't. Hey, it works. Control Alt S. Yeah. Setup. There we go. Wow. I should use an LCD for this. You won't get that screen rolling effect. <laughs> Base memory 640 extended 384k. Wow, we got to fix that. Yeah. It's not finding the fixed disk though. It is in there, it is plugged in. Hmm, not finding the hard drive. I'll double check it, but everything's plugged in the way it should be. Doesn't sound like it's running though. There we go. 
It just doesn't auto detect hard drives, of course. It's that old, it won't. <laughs> MS DOS 3.30, and it's up. Load Windows. Oh, look at that. We've got Windows 3.1. Wow. Moving up in the world. <laughs> Better than Windows 3.0. Well, then again, uh, what did I have? I had Windows 3.11. 3.1? Yeah, that's kind of old. Yeah, the reason I wasn't finding the hard disk wasn't because the disk isn't operating. It's because, well... I'm used to new stuff which sort of auto detects, even though the BIOS battery is dead, it just auto detects and goes to uh, master disk drive. But yeah, well, it's booted. I need a mouse though. Program manager. This thing's faster than some of my Core 2 computers. Like, it took, takes no time to boot this stuff up. Oh, the DOS prompt again. It's probably a lot easier to use. <laughs> well, I was at least hoping to find a copy of Commander Keen or something on it to play, but either the monitor's not scaling properly and it's cutting off part of the uh, screen in Windows, or there's just nothing on there anyway. Like, I literally couldn't find anything under Windows, and trying to find directories and stuff under DOS, well, I'm that rusty, I just can't find anything. So, yeah, it's a nice little collectible, I'll give it that much. The monitor belongs to my old 386, which needs a new CMOS battery, but... Again, they're both nice computers, I just have to uh, figure out what size the hard drive in the 386 is so I can reinitialize its own BIOS. It doesn't have any specs on the hard drive, so I can't tell it what it is and it won't boot up. At least this one here, I know what it is. But, yeah, it's nice stuff. Not the most reputable computers, but at least they were everywhere and a bit of fun back in the day. Early 90s or like mid 80s, early 90s, Amstrad stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thought you might enjoy that sort of thing. And uh, stay tuned for more. I'm always collecting old computers and things. I'll have to fire this little amplifier up one day. I'm guessing that came with it too, considering the little plug it's got on it. <laughs>